Hello and welcome back to Toadstool Tarot. Today I have for you Le Metamorphosis du Jour. This is a one of several uh, Granville, J.J. Granville inspired decks. He was a sort of a satirical illustrator from the late 1800s. Uh, you may be familiar with his work. Much of it involves um, <clears throat> depictions of animals wearing clothes or in human situations, sort of anthropomorphized images of uh, people from different uh, segments of society, sort of poking fun at high society dames and, and uh, gentlemen uh, in sort of bloated, with bloated natures or uh, very haughty expressions or, uh, you know, um, it cuts across uh, a whole range of society from the very rich to the very poor. But anyway, <clears throat> This is from Tiroko Studios. It came out in 2019. Tiroko Studios, as far as I can tell, is a Russian company. These came from Russia, anyway, and they took forever to get here. I expect to wait a couple of months, probably, if you order. Um, it's still available. It's kind of a hefty price. Um, and there is another deck, a similar type deck, coming in a couple months, in September, I believe, from Baba Studios, which uh, is a very, a very similar quality. I think the backgrounds are a different design, different color. The borders are a little different. Baba Studios has different production values, so the cardstock is probably different, packaging, everything. But um, I believe it is a second edition of a deck because I think Jen uh, uh, Science to Soul, I always get her channel name mixed up, but Jen from Down Under in Australia did a walkthrough of the first edition. And so I got to see the cards, and there's a particular image of a mourning dove that I have always loved. I have a book on Granville of his animal illustrations, and I really love this one image. And it was not in the Baba deck at all, but it's in this deck. So that was a kind of a make or break thing. The other thing is I believe the, uh, the Baba one is in pre-order now or um, Kickstarter mode or something. And I hate those. I know they're helpful to the deck creators, but I just, it, they fill me with anxiety over the waiting. I mean, two months was long enough for me to wait for the shipping on this one, let alone four to six months from the one from Baba Studio, although now it's getting closer. It's only a month or two away. But anyway, <clears throat> enough about their deck. So this deck comes in a really hefty box with a lift top lid. It does have a little white book, but it's not a little book. It's actually bigger than the box and it doesn't fit in the box, which seems questionable to me why they didn't create some kind of packaging that would incorporate the book. You know, what do you, how do you store this book? Where do you put it if it doesn't fit in the box? It's um, a sort of a semi-glossy production, glossy little pages. Uh, full color um, thumbnails of card images and about a page uh, to two pages, uh, a page and a half, I guess, each uh, for descriptions of each card. And uh, oh, here you probably can't see. You'll see the card come out. There's my little moon card with the morning dove that I like. But the the you need a Mac microscope practically to read this book because the type, the font size is so tiny. And 
this is not a deck, though I read intuitively for the most part, I don't believe this can be intuitively read. There's um, stuff going on in the imagery, but I'm not sure you can really pick up on the Rider Waite system from these cards. It's basically a beautiful art deck that uh, you can look at the labels and read them or refer to the book. And the book uh, descriptions are basically interpretations of the cards. They give you no explanation whatsoever as to why the uh, creator of this deck applied a particular image to a particular card. No explanation. You're on your own. The backs of the cards ha are reversible. They've got these four little images, which are kind of strange. I'm not thrilled about it. it it's interesting in a way. It's got this kind of prince, pauper and the prince kind of thing, both both extremes of society with a, an eagle or something kind of perched on their noses. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what to make of that. It is reversible. And uh, the card stock is a nice weight. It's flexible. It's stiff enough. It's not too thin or too thick. However, it is matte card stock. And I don't like matte cardstock for the most part. This is, I mean, it feels nice, but it's what happens to me with matte cardstock. It does not glide well, and cards stick and clump together. Now, I don't know if over time and a lot of use, whether uh, that quality will wear off and make them easier to handle. But initially, I don't find that these are going to be easy to shuffle or easy to um, work with. I don't riffle shuffle. I overhand shuffle. So therein becomes a problem. I think riffle shuffling might work okay. Uh, they all have a, a, a smallish decorative border and lovely small label titles that are semi-transparent. The coloring, which uh, my lighting and camera is not going to pick up great because I'm on a shoestring budget here, but the colors are beautiful. The line work is gorgeous. They are beautiful images, and if you're a fan of Granville, you should get get a copy of this deck. I think there's also one at Printer Studio that's a different deck. I can't remember the name of it though. I believe Kelly Bear has done a walkthrough. And then you have the Baba Studios one. I don't know if there are more beyond these three using Granville images. But <coughs> The colors are, I mean, this is, the focus is mostly, mostly the fine uh, pen and ink line work. And the colors look like they're, they sort of have been applied very delicately with uh, watercolor washes over the um, ink drawings or, I don't know if these were engravings. I guess they could have been engravings. They must have been engravings back in the day. Here's the chariot. Some of them you can kind of tell, some of them, this one's strength, it's a sleeping cat with some mice pestering it, I guess. Here's the hermit, I mean, he has a lantern, but otherwise I don't see this as a hermit, it's more like, looks like a night watchman. <laughs> Wheel of Fortune. Why? Because it's got a wagon wheel in it? 
I don't know. Justice. The Hanged Man. This one has a, a cat hung by its leg. Looks like it had been tr caught in a trap. It was after some rats. But it looks like it's broken free. Death. This is curious. It looks like an, an eagle or something perched high on a on a rock and there seems to be a little sleeping or dead bird. I think it looks like a sleeping bird under a blanket at the bottom, but it is a death card, so I don't know. Here's the tower. It's a fox attacking a rabbit. Not sure why that's the tower. Maybe maybe this is considered the tower and this action is considered violence or upheaval next to a tower. I don't know. This is the star. It's a pretty card. I like that. I sort of like these bird cards even though I'm not a bird fancier and I tend to have a fear of birds but I like the imagery of these birds wearing clothes. And here it is, my favorite card, my favorite Granville image, the moon with the morning dove in her nightgown and nightcap and candle by the moonlight. The world. Oh no, sorry. Yeah, that is the world. See, I got two cards here because they stick together. Ace of Swords. Two of Swords. Three. I have to be careful when I draw these for you because, like I said, they do tend to want to stick together. Four. They're kind of hard to grab. Five. So I'd say if you're a card snob like me, you have a particular taste in cards. The, this might be a problematic deck for you. This matte stock. Also, the thing about a uh, matte stock, I'm not sure how, uh, some of you other collectors will know how well this wears over time. Do they tend to soil more easily or um, disintegrate or something if they don't have some kind of lamination on the cards? It seems to me like even just cards that have a, a mild lamination, sort of a sheen to them, can be readily cleaned when they get soiled. Whereas these, I'm not so sure you can do that. I suspect that water or a mildly damp cloth might uh, damage the cards. Now, because of my unfortunate camera and lighting limitations, you're not seeing these in their full glory. The colors are exquisite under decent light in the proper setting. But what do you think? Do you think you could read with these? Suppose they didn't have labels. Could you still read with them? I think uh, ultimately if I use them in order to find them workable at all, I will enjoy and appreciate the image, but my eye will go 
immediately to the label on the bottom to help me read the card. So I have to do some translation in my head as to how these apply to the Rider Waite system or Rider Waite tradition. Eight of Wands, the birds, I like the birds. See, they could have had birds flying, but they've got birds walking in a long stride. Here's an elephant and the Nine of Wands. And the Ten of Wands, that burden card. That's Looks like a couple of mules carrying a hippopotamus in a uh, carry wagon. I like this one. That's the Queen of Wands. She seems more like she'd be a Queen of Swords type. Here's a delicate balance. Looks like a little grasshopper with earrings in a ballerina dress balancing on a tightrope. This is the two of coins. Four of coins. A miserly turkey, I guess. Five of coins, six, seven, eight, nine, a lovely giraffe. This is a very Kafka-esque card with a the cockroach and a mirror image of a gentleman. I'm assuming that's meant to be a mirror and not a uh, portrait. I could be wrong. It comes across that way to me as a mirror. There were a handful of illustrators around the late 1800s that did satirical drawings. It's sort of the way they got away uh, with uh, poking fun at the uh, upper class by doing uh, illustrations that weren't specifically caricatures or portraits, but uh, made fun of people by... by uh, association through uh, caricatures, animal caricatures. I'm hoping at some point somebody will come out with uh, some other art-inspired decks like Max Ernst, the Surrealist, did a, uh, a couple of books. I think one's called A Week of Kindness. 
and um, it, they are collaged engravings. I think that would make a fabulous tarot deck. Also, Victor Brauner, I believe, another surrealist, actually paint, did some paintings of tarot images that I hope someday somebody will release a deck of his work. There is a Salvador Dali deck, but I think he created that specifically for tarot and in the, in the 60s or 70s. It was recently reissued not too long ago. I love this card, the Queen of Cups. The sillier they are, the more I like them and the King of Cups. So that is the... Oh, also these cards are a little... I should say they're a little bit larger size than, uh, than one might be used to. So may I pull a card here for a comparison? That's your average size tarot card. And it looks like about half an inch taller and wider than a regular tarot. The deck is pretty thick. So there you have it. It's the uh, Le Metamorphosis du Jour. I'm not sure what Granville's background was, whether he was French. I'm, I'm assuming so, since the title is in French. And in which case, I'm not sure why a Russian company is releasing a French-based deck, but go figure. See you soon.